Hi there. Now, I've got an exercise here, a mixed exercise, that uh, you've got to find the missing side x in each of these four examples. So just give you a moment to pause the video, have a go at these, and when you come back, I'll take you slowly through the work solutions, or you might want to fast forward just to uh, check them out quickly. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So I'm assuming you've watched the tutorials. Then what we need to do in any of these triangles is label the sides. Just two of the sides is sufficient. Label the side that you want to find. In this triangle, the side X here is the opposite to the angle. So if I label that O for the opposite side. And the side we're given in this example is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the right angle. So I'll just label that as H. So then what we need to do next is just consider the trigonometric ratio that connects the opposite and the hypotenuse together. And that's going to be the sine ratio. For this one, it's the sine of the angle, the sine of 58 degrees, and that equals the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, okay, that way round. So for this example, then it's going to be the opposite side, x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12.4. And with this one, when the x is on the top, we need to remove the denominator here, the number 12.4. So we multiply both sides by 12.4, and we therefore have 12.4 times the sine of 58 degrees equals just the x. Okay, so x equals 12.4 times the sine of 58. And if you work that out on your calculator, make sure that your calculator is in degrees mode, then you should find you get 10.51 and so on. And if we round this, say, to one decimal place, then that's going to be equal to 10.5. Don't forget the units, which in this example is meters. So it's 10.5 meters. And I'll just slip in there one dp for one decimal place. Good idea just to check your answer, see if it seems sensible. You would expect an answer of 10.51 here to be smaller anyway than the hypotenuse, which it is. OK, so uh, good chance then of that being correct. Move on now to this next example here. In this one, we've got to label the sides. The side that we want to find x is the adjacent side. OK, so I'll label that A. And on this side, the longest side again, opposite the right angle, this will be the hypotenuse. So what we've got here is the cosine ratio. Cosine of an angle, remember, compares the adjacent with the hypotenuse. So you've got the cosine, or cos for short, of the angle, 28 degrees compares the adjacent side, which is x, with the hypotenuse, which is 5.3. And again, we need to get rid of the 5.3 here in the denominator, so we multiply both sides by 5.3. And we therefore have that 5.3 times the cosine of 28 equals x. I'm just going to write x straight away here as being equal to 5.3 cosine of 28 degrees. And again, if you work this out in your calculator, you find that you get 4.67 and so on. And rounding this up to one decimal place gives us 4.7. And the units, OK, are going to be in centimetres. So 4.7 centimetres to one dp, one decimal place. And again, check this out. You'll notice your answer is less than the hypotenuse, OK? So uh, good chance of it being correct. Let's move on to this one here. Label up the sides. The side that we want then is the adjacent side. Put that as A. And the one that we're given the, is the opposite side. So call that O. OK. So 
or trigonometric ratio connects these two sides, or it's the tangent ratio, or tan for short. So with this one, it's going to be the tan of the angle, 33 degrees. Be careful here because the tangent ratio is opposite over adjacent. So in this example, it's going to be the opposite side 2 divided by the adjacent side x. And unlike these two examples, notice then that the x is in the denominator here. So what we need to do is remove this x first of all by multiplying both sides of the equation here by x. So therefore, what we have is x times the tan of 33 degrees equals just 2. OK, and now we need to divide both sides by tan of 33 degrees just to leave us with x on this side. So if we do that, we therefore have that x equals 2 divided by the tan of 33 degrees. And if you work this out on your calculator, you find that x turns out to be 3.079 and so on. And rounding this to one decimal place gives us 3.1. The units are metres, so we've got 3.1 metres to one decimal place. Now, again, check your answer out, check to see if it seems sensible. Notice that with this triangle here, we've got a longer length here than what we have here. So this is very easy to check because if this was 45 degrees, would have an isosceles triangle. These two lengths would be exactly the same. And because this is less than 45 degrees, you would expect this side to be longer than the two meters. A valuable check, okay? And you can see it is longer than two meters. Now, moving over to this last example here, let's label up the sides. We've got the side that we want, x, is the hypotenuse. It's opposite the right angle, so label that h. And the side that we're given is the adjacent side. It's adjacent to 50 degrees, so we'll label that as an a. And with this one, comparing adjacent hypotenuse is the cosine ratio, or cos for short. So we've got the cosine of 50 degrees compares the adjacent side with the hypotenuse in that order. So it's going to be 3.2 divided by x. And just like this example here, x is in the denominator, so we need to multiply both sides by x. So therefore we have x times the cosine of 50 degrees just leaves us with 3.2 on the right hand side. OK, so I'll just divide this off, OK, just put a little dotted line in there. And if we carry on, then what I need to do next is to divide both sides by the cosine of 50 degrees. And so therefore, I have x equals 3.2 divided by the cosine of 50 degrees. And doing that gives us... 4.978 and so on. Okay, rounding this to one decimal place gives us 5.0 and the units will be kilometers and that's to one decimal place, one dp. And again, just check this out here. Okay, it's we're finding the hypotenuse, we would expect it to be a longer length than the 3.2 kilometers, and indeed it is. Okay, so good chance that that would be correct. So, I hope that's given you uh, more revision then on using trigonometry to work out the length of a side of a triangle.